Hey everybody, I'm George Makris. And I'm Aaron Neal. First things first, AMD's AM5 platform is their first DDR5 platform. It's their fastest platform to date, but it also comes at a massive cost of heat. What are we doing about that? So luckily, AMD kept the retention the same between the AM4 and AM5 platform. And while the socket is physically different, the retention is the same, which is great because that means any all-in-one cooler that's out there today and our Hydrex series is going to cool that new platform out of the box. So anything we have today that is AM4 certified and AM4 compatible will work on AM5 no problem at all. Absolutely. So I can go get an Elite Capalx cooler, just go ahead and do it. All right, so that's good news. That means that you can go on Amazon, you can go on Corsair's website, you can go anywhere and buy a, a Elite Capellix cooler or something like Elite LCD, and it'll work fine on AM5. Okay, so it does come at a slight cost though. If I have a 3600X today and I wanna to go to a 7900X, uh, can I use my same cooler? Well, so there's a little bit difference in the TDP between the two coolers, 125 watts versus 170 watt TDP. So you're seeing this higher power usage, which means there's more heat in the system. If you had something like a 120 or a 240 um, and you're going up to a 7950X, the chances are you should probably look at upsizing a little bit, maybe to a 280 and or a 360 if your case will fit it. Yeah, so just so you guys are aware too, we're talking about processors that used to have 105 watt TDP, now have 170 watt TDP. That's a pretty big jump. So if you were running a 240 before, I would definitely, like you said, look at going to 280 or even a 360. So if I have a 360, the question then is, I want to buy a 360, is it going to fit in my existing case? Which Corsair cases fit 360s? Well, right now, our core lineup, 4,000, 5,000, 7,000, all fit a 360. The 4,000D will fit it in front, where the 5,000D and the 7,000D will fit it on a roof. A lot of our legacy cases also do it. So if you have a case, a 680X, 750D, 760T, yeah. Um, a lot of those cases already fit a 360 um, by default. Even the 500D um, had a 360 support in the front. 570X yeah. also as well. There, a lot of our cases had 360 support. Um, so if you're looking to do one of those higher TDP CPUs and you have the higher TDP GPU to go with it, you know, that 360 will really help you out. One of my favorite spoilers here is that the very first case we ever launched, the 800D, had a 360 support at the top. We were the first guy that I was aware of that had a built-in native 360 support in a, in a computer case uh, back in like 2009. So I'm a little bit biased on that because Aaron and I designed that case and put it together, <laughs> but it still works. So if you have a case from 13 years ago and you want to use it, still works. it'll work fine with an AM5. So. <laughs> I would recommend getting something new though, because my God. Um, but <laughs> let's talk a little bit about that from a cooling perspective though. It will fit in a 4000D airflow, but would you use that? Is that the best ideal situation for cooling? If you're going high end this generation, you know, if you have 450 watt graphics card, you know, 170 watt CPU, uh, you know, lots of RGB, you know, you have that M.2 drive, again, heat, DDR5 heat. So there's a lot more heat inside the system. You know, kind of the best configuration for cooling is going to be to have, you know, a 5000D where you can put the 360 on top and have that heat from the CPU go out as an exhaust. And that way you have your front intake unobstructed into the graphics card, motherboard, M.2 drives, DDR5 drives, um, just so you have the best cooling configuration. That's where you're going to see your best temps. Yeah, so I would put the, the all-in-one 360 up top with fans underneath to push it out or, you know, pull on the top. Um, or push pull if you have a case that'll yeah. do that. Um, then you use the front fans as intakes, blow cold air across everything, turn your exhaust fan up to max, turn your top fans up to max to get everything, get the hot air out of the case. So that's the best situation for cooling. So 5000 series is ideal, 4000 series will work, 7000 series, 5000T would be yeah. good too. Um, so that's how you would cool it. If you guys need fans, obviously you know we have tons of that stuff. Let's talk about memory. So this is the first DDR5 platform for AMD. Uh, so let's talk about what that means. Can I just go take any AMDs or any DDR5 out of the, the store and just buy it and put it in my system? No, not in this case. AMD is going to be, their platform is going to be very specific. Um, and so we do have AMD Expo certified memory. Um, and you're going to want to look for that specifically because it is going to work the best on that platform. Yeah, so that is an important note. If you have, you know, if you find cheap DDR5 somewhere online and it's not AMD Expo certified, chances are it probably won't work for you. Make sure you get AMD Expo certified uh, memory that's validated by AMD to work with their platform. We have that stuff, it's available in both our Dominator and Vengeance lines, it's on the Corsair website. Anywhere you can buy Corsair memory, you should get it. Um, but it is really, really important because AMD is very aggressive with the way they do timings and stuff and just standard off the shelf DDR5 that is not certified may not work. So highly recommend AMD Expo certified memory for this. 
Let's talk a little bit about storage as well. So a lot of people have been excited about PCI Express 5.0 with AM5, which really good storage speeds, really yeah. fast. Um, Intel actually has had that too with the 12th gen uh, and the upcoming 13th gen, but a lot of the Intel motherboards didn't have the PCI Express 5.0 yeah. built into it. I think that'll be coming a lot more as the new 13th gen comes out and all the new motherboards have more PCI Express 5. But the good news for those of you guys who care is PCI Express 5 drives are crazy fast. They have upped the speed once again, even from the PCIe 4 NVMe uh, M.2 drives have been really fast for a while. And this takes it up another level. So you're over what, 10 gigabytes? 10 gigabytes a second, second. over 10 gigabytes a second of uh, reads, uh, according to our guys. So uh, we'll have that available later this year. So you guys will see that coming out pretty quick. I believe it's on our website already. The MP700 uh, is coming about soon. So we'll see that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what else you need. Okay, so you got the storage, you got power. You know, if you're at the highest end, you know, you may want to look at, you know, that 450 watt GPU and that 170 watt CPU and, you know, up to like 100 watts of other stuff in your system between DDR5 and M.2 drives, RGB if you have it. Um, you know, you're starting to push a little bit higher. Now, obviously, that you're not going to be using that all the time, 100%, um, but if you're gaming or content creation, you're going to be using a lot of that at the same time, um, and you are going to use a lot of that power. Now, power supplies are the most efficient around 50%. Um, plus, you have the noise aspect of it. You know, for our PSUs, even with zero RPM mode, where they're silent for most of the time when you're browsing the web or you know doing spreadsheets. Um, if you are heavy gaming or doing content creation, that power goes up, the temperature goes up, and the fan kind of kicks on. Um, and it's one of those things where you know you don't want to run the power supply at 100% all the time. Right. Um, so just having a little bit of extra headroom is there. So if you're at the highest end, you know an 850 will work for a lot of these configurations, but a thousand watt might give you something that's a little bit more silent while you're running all that power through your right. system. And you know, it's in our best interest, obviously, to sell you guys really high-end power supplies. We have 1500 watt power supplies, to be quite frank with you, you really don't need them, uh, unless you're gonna be putting a lot of stuff in your system that, or you know, running multiple graphics cards or uh, you know, farming some type of new crypto that I don't know about. Uh, <laughs> six or seven GPUs. Six or seven <laughs> GPUs. Uh, but realistically, I think for the most users, 750 watt, 850 watt, that's a sweet spot. 1000 watt, if you want a little bit of extra headroom is fine. Yeah. Um, and if you just, you know, hey, I'm just, I never want to worry about it again. I don't ever want to hear my power supply fan, go get an AX, HX 1500i or something yeah. like that. So that's what I recommend on that. In summation, if you are buying an AM5 processor and you want DDR5 memory, get AMD Expo certified memory. If you want to cool it, you get any of our coolers that we sell. Any of our all-in-one coolers, any of our Hydro Series, any of our Hydro X Series yeah. will support that. Hydro X Series works fine. If you want storage, we have PCI Express 4 that works today, uh, and we will soon have the PCI Express 5.0 drives. So that's all you guys need to know about the next gen AM5. When we come to 13th gen, when Intel actually announces that, and we can give you more specifics on that, we'll come and talk to you guys again about what you might need to know for that. But that's it for us today. So hopefully that answers some of you guys' questions. Thanks again. Thank you very much.